Hi there, it's Anitra again, and this is my second video. I'm attempting to do videos on Fridays. Uh, I did one last Friday, you'd find it under my videos, and it's Friday now, and um, as much as I don't feel like making one right now, I don't feel very good. I, I also uh, appreciate just showing up and showing up in whatever state we're in whatever state I'm in and the state I'm in right now is that I feel pretty tired and a little bit nauseous. Uh, today I went to have a breast MRI and I looked to find, I live up in the Sierra Nevada, Sierra foothills, and I looked to find a place that had an open breast MRI. I did an open MRI for the brain and I had to go down to Folsom to do that. It was a little bit of a drive. And they couldn't find one for me that had an open machine. Um, so instead I asked my oncologist to give me a stronger dose of the anxiety medication. So he did, um, and for whatever reason, uh, I feel nauseous and sick and don't have an appetite today. Also last Wednesday, so two days ago, I had another dose of Herceptin and I'm getting 50 milligrams, that's the IPT dose that I'm getting each week, and now I've had five of those. Um, and I felt pretty good, actually, that day I didn't feel sick, which I, ha I haven't felt sick after those, after those treatments on Wednesdays. Um, but, so then I had yesterday, yesterday was fine, and then for some reason today I just, I feel nauseous. I don't know if it's from the um, galad galadium, I always say that word wrong, gadolinium, gadolinium, um, going into my system uh, combined maybe with the anxiety medication. So anyway, I'm not feeling great, but I did want to update. So I've got at least two more treatments um, of Herceptin IPT over the next couple of weeks, um, and then my doctor will be back. He's been out of town and will be ultrasounding uh, the tumor which is on my left breast um, and seeing where to go from there. I think I mentioned before he really wants me to do surgery because uh, he thinks that if it's localized get rid of that and then we still work on your immune system and work on inflammation and work on getting you healthy in all the ways that you need to do but let's get rid of the tumor. Um, I've talked to some women and I see there are other options, um, one being black salve, and I need to research that. I haven't researched that. Um, I saw some photos of that and basically that the tumor, just the dead tumor, just comes out of the body. The body forms a hole and slowly, slowly the tumor actually releases itself from the body. It's pretty amazing and awesome and gruesome at the same time so I don't know enough about it I know that it's incredibly painful um, so I'm right now considering the difference between um, not encouraging the tumor to come out in any particular way but like let the body process it out all the way up to surgery and I just surgically remove it so I think the findings of the breast MRI will be very telling for me as well um, I also had an ECG, an echocardiogram earlier this week, and I don't have the findings of that, but when you are on Herceptin, they're they want to monitor your heart rate um, to make sure your heart's in good condition because there can be some problems associated with heart Herceptin in the heart. But again, I'm taking a really small dose, and I'm getting, I'm getting 50 milligram, and... Um, I think when I did the math on what the standard amount that the hospital gives, uh, it's, I think it was like between four and 500 milligrams. So that's why um, women will have a lot of side effects, even though Herceptin is said to have fewer side effects than a lot of the other chemo and immunotherapy agents. So um, there's that. What else did I want to say? Um, yeah, I guess that's basically it. I've got I've got to drive up to Reno, Carson City, two more times over the next two weeks, and over the next two weeks I'll be uh, making some decisions. Um, I'm also doing my supplements, doing a coffee enema every day, 
only drinking alkaline water, um, going on the biomat, going in the infrared sauna that also has ozone. Um, I get my blood ozonated each week when I get the Herceptin, so that happens, and then I get an ozone colonic. So I don't know what my maintenance schedule will look like. Well, actually, and then again, at the end of um, January, I'll do another RGCC test, the Greek test, and in that test, they give you a count of the circulating tumor cells, um, and I was at 6.1, uh, and the goal is to be under one, because it's said that every body has some cancer cells in them. It's just a matter that, their bo that the immune system in the body usually takes care of those cancerous cells and processes them out of the body. But when it ends up becoming a tumor, there's some sort of, there's some sort of hiccup, there's some problem in the body that the body isn't able to process those cells out naturally. So I don't know what my ongoing treatment is going to be. Um, after we deal with the this tumor and it's really I mean it's remarkable how you just see me feeling around here but I feel nearly nothing I mean compared to the other side there's a little bit of, of kind of fibrosic tissue or in fib whatever fibrous tissue in there and but compared to what this was like I mean there were like hard lumps like calcified lumps it felt like it had concrete in there and that's completely gone um, I'm also hoping the breast MRI will show me the nodes because I do feel sometimes something in here um, that feels like that there's some movement there when I did the PET CT scan it did show um, lymph node involvement one to three lymph nodes so um, there is something there is something going on there, but the odd thing is is that I thought I was feeling something in my lymph on the right side, and I mentioned it to my doctor, and he said there's no way you could have that, just the way that it would travel, you can't, it can't have spread to that area, so that was very reassuring for me. Um, anyway, yeah, thanks for caring, thanks for listening, thanks for following along, I'll do another one on Friday, and um, I also do a blog where I write um, I kind of like the video process and the writing process. They're very different for me. Uh, they're both kind of creative outlets for me, but more than anything, I just want there to be information out there for women who are looking and searching and want to have options besides the ones that are presented to them. I spoke to somebody today who was diagnosed later than me. I was diagnosed on 10-22-2017, um, and she was diagnosed November November 2017, and she had a double mastectomy already. I mean, today's 1229, so from within a month of diagnosis, she had a double mastectomy, and she doesn't even she hadn't even had any scans, so she doesn't know if the cancer metastasized anywhere in her body. I mean, what if it's in multiple places, and they pull out the cancer in one part of her body, and it's in another part of her body? I mean. It seems odd to me to just go chasing around tumors in the body and continuing to remove them. And there's implications with that. So anyway, you know, each person has to decide for themselves what they're comfortable doing and make choices that work for them. And thank God we have a lot of choices out there. But I do, I do want other women to know um, who have the same diagnosis as me that there are other options. Um, and again, my diagnosis is triple positive invasive ductal carcinoma in the three o'clock position the tumor was 2.5 centimeters initially and when it was re looked at it was still 2.5 centimeters um, and that was within within a one month window I don't know what it is now um, triple positive I said that and I'm doing IPT with Herceptin so stay tuned on the journey thanks again